Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of Eugenie LC. This work was uploaded to Chem Archive by the Shemvi Group in their paper, Iron Catalyzed Hydrobenzylation, Stereoselective Synthesis of Eugenie LC. Eugenie LC is a moroterpenoid isolated from the fruit of Eugenia umbelliflora. It shows selective antibacterial activity against Staphylococcus aureus, including a resistant MRSA strain with a minimum inhibitory concentration of less than 1 microgram per mil, which is a similar activity to vancomycin, daptomycin, and biothionol. Eugenia LC has quite an interesting structure, consisting of two different parts. One side of the molecule is a highly oxidized, hexasubstituted aromatic ring, while the other is an aromadendrine containing five contiguous stereocenters and a fused seven membered ring. These two fragments are joined together at a chiral quaternary carbon center, adding further difficulty to the already complex structure. So let's look at the synthesis. This begins with Mukayama hydration of aromadendrine. Iron ACAC first reacts with Shenvi silane, generating an iron 3 hydride complex. This reacts with a double bond of aromadendrine, adding a hydrogen radical to the terminal position, generating a stabilized radical on the tertiary carbon center. This radical then reacts with methyl 4 nitrobenzene sulfonate, which attacks from the less sterically hindered bottom face of the ring. This leaves a radical residing on the nitro group, which is then reduced by the iron 2 complex. Protonation of this species upon workup generates the target tertiary alcohol in a 70% yield as a single isomer. It is interesting to note that the researchers collected the fruit of E. globulus and performed the extraction of aromadendrine themselves, as they found that commercial supplies of aromadendrine were limited due to the pandemic, and the eucalyptus oils that they could purchase contained very small amounts of the desired molecules. The newly formed alcohol was then protected using isopropenyl acetate and catalytic PTSA. The reaction is driven forward by the elimination of an enol that tautomerizes to form acetone. With the alcohol now protected, they could carry out a stereoselective CH oxidation at the C4 prime position. They did this using chromium trioxide and tetrabutyl ammonium periodate. It has been proposed that the periodate attacks the chromium center and eliminates iodate, forming a chromium peroxide. This compound then attacks the carbon hydrogen bond, adding an oxygen to the tertiary center while abstracting a hydrogen atom. Hydrolysis of the resulting chromium adduct yields the alcohol as a single isomer in a 75% yield. This alcohol could then be eliminated by first reacting it with mesylan hydride and DMAP. This mesylates the hydroxyl group and the addition of triethylamine deprotonates the molecule on the face anti to the mesyl group, promoting an elimination to form an alkene. This formed the desired alkene together with the undesired exoalkene with a 5 to 1 ratio. Having served its purpose, the acetate protecting group was then cleaved using potassium hydroxide, completing the synthesis of the aromadendrine fragment. So let's move on and look at the synthesis of the aromatic fragment. This started with dimethyl fluoroglucanol, which was first formulated with formamidine acetate. This compound can undergo electrophilic aromatic substitution as the aromatic ring is quite activated due to the methoxy and phenol groups. This attacks the formamidinium ion, which forms a cationic intermediate that rapidly loses a proton to restore aromaticity within the ring. The diamine is then hydrolyzed by hydrochloric acid, generating the formal group. This substitution occurs twice and produces the dialdehyde in an 87% yield. These aldehydes then took part in a pinnic oxidation. Sodium chloride first reacts with monosodium phosphate to produce chlorous acid. This first protonates the aldehyde, and the chloride then acts as a nucleophile to attack the carbonyl centre. The resulting tetrahedral intermediate then undergoes a hydrogen abstraction, oxidising the carbon oxygen bond to form the carboxylic acid upon the elimination of hypochlorous acid. As we saw before, both sides of the molecule react, and two carboxylic acids were formed. These carboxylic acids then took part in the formation of two dioxinone rings. They were first deprotonated by potassium phosphate and then underwent a nucleophilic addition to bromochloromethane. The resulting intermediate rapidly undergoes an intramolecular nucleophilic attack, eliminating the chloride to form the bis-dioxinone 
with a 42% yield over two steps. This was then brominated using MBS and benzoyl peroxide. This product could be crystallised and this structure showed significant distortion. This is due to electrostatic repulsion between the lone pairs and the oxygen atoms that are held in close proximity due to the rigidity of the polycyclic structure. It is this highly strained structure that likely accounts for the low yield of the dioxinone formation. With the aromatic fragment now complete, it then took part in a metal hydride hydrogen atom transfer SH2 reaction. An SH2 reaction is a bimolecular homolytic substitution. The mechanism shown here has not conclusively been proven, but is likely based on other studies into the mechanisms of similar reactions. An iron 2 tetraphenyl porphyrin complex first reacts with Shen V silane in the presence of air to form an iron 3 metal hydride. This metal hydride can then react with the aromatic bromide fragment, promoting a metal hydride hydrogen atom transfer. This eliminates HBr, together with the formation of either an iron 3 organometallic compound containing a carbon iron bond, or an iron 2 pair with a benzylic radical forming an outer sphere complex without a direct carbon iron bond. In the other catalytic cycle, another iron hydride, in this case formed from iron 3 ACAC, reacts with the alkene coupling partner, again performing a metal hydride hydrogen atom transfer. As we saw in the other catalytic cycle, this can form either a stabilised radical or an organo-iron compound possessing a carbon iron bond. Both this radical and the benzylic radical then take part in a bimolecular radical substitution which is likely directed by the steric hindrance in the aromadendrine fragment. This formed the carbon-carbon bond at the quaternary centre with the 50% yield and a 10 to 1 DR. With this critical bond now formed, all that remained was to install the correct functionality on the outer edges of the molecule. To this end, an elimination reaction was carried out using propane, phosphonic and hydride. This is attacked by the hydroxyl group to activate it as a leaving group. The molecule is then deprotonated by dyed terp-butylpyridine, forming the double bond in an 80% yield with a 5 to 1 mixture of alkene regioisomers. This compound could be crystallised, providing definitive proof of the stereochemistry. Taking this forward, it was then reacted in a Takai olefination reaction. This reaction used zinc instead of the more common chromium, which first reacts with 1 1 dibromopropane. This undergoes an oxidative addition into one of the carbon bromine bonds. The second oxidative addition into the other carbon bromine bond is quite slow, however, it can be catalyzed by lead chloride. This first undergoes transmetallation with the zinc bromide group, and the bromine on this organo lead compound undergoes rapid oxidative addition with the zinc present in the reaction mixture. This hetero bimetallic compound once again undergoes transmetallation, forming the di zinc bromide. It is this compound that then reacts with titanium tetrachloride, which first undergoes transmetallation with one of the zinc moieties. Following this, the other zinc bromide is eliminated, forming a geminal carbon dianion. This species can undergo a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition with one of the esters present in the molecule in a mechanism similar to the Wittig reaction. The oxotitanin ring then undergoes a cycloreversion, generating the desired alkene in a 1 to 1 mixture of E and Z isomers. In the next reaction, the remaining ester was reduced using dibol, which adds a hydride to the carbonyl, forming a tetrahedral intermediate. This collapses to break apart the dioxinone ring upon the elimination of formaldehyde. This was then stirred in DCM with acetic acid and silica scraped from a TLC plate. This served to hydrolyze the remaining dioxane ring with the enol totimerizing to the more stable ketone. With this complete, the final step was the demethylation using lithium thiocresylate. This acts as a nucleophile towards the methoxy ether, eliminating the phenoxide, which is stabilized by the two electron withdrawing carbonyl groups in the ortho positions. Reprotonation of this molecule completed the synthesis of Eugenia C. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Join me in the next one, where we will look at the total synthesis of inelaganolide.